Good morning. Oh, welcome. This is the third Sunday of Easter. It's great to see everyone here this morning. Also want to welcome everyone joining us online. If you're on Facebook, make sure to give a like to the feed today and just share in the comments to let us know that you're with us here today. But we are uh, celebrating today still the resurrection, right? It is Easter. It is, Easter is not just one day. I talked about that last week. It's not just one day of the year. It's not even really just a season of the year. Uh, Easter is the truth that we hold in our hearts that we can celebrate every day to know that because Jesus is risen that we too may live a new life. So let's try this. He's risen. He's, He's risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning. Uh, so we begin in this morning. Uh, always is great to see you all here watching the Lord and giving thanks to God for all the blessings that he gave it to us. Uh, I invite everyone to please rise and we begin our worship service with the opening hymn number 905. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, keep a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in though war and deed, and that we can now free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. 
Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declare us to be your children and gather us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through your ministry of your Son, you raise up a fallen world. Grant to your faithful people rescue from the power of the everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is taken from Acts chapter 3. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us as to by our own power or pity we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorify his servant Jesus, whom you deliver over and deny in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you deny the holy and righteous one and ask for a murder to be granted to you. And you kill the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness. And his name by faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ will suffer, he does fulfill. 
Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed to you, for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that he did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who does hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away your sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps of sinning. No one who keeps of on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, and he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. I want to invite all of our children to come forward at this time. Any other children this morning? Oh, we got a few. Okay. All right. Well, it's good to see you here this morning. We got just a few today, but that's great. This is where two or three are gathered in God's name that he is present there with them. So have, have you ever, anyone here ever been afraid? No? Wow. I know I, there's been times where I've been afraid. Sometimes, have you ever been worried? Yeah, I know I, sometimes I'm worried. Sometimes you doubt. Do you ever doubt? I know that, that I doubt. Sometimes we have feelings that are like that, but it's always good to know that Jesus is with us always. And I got a song this morning. You want to stand up? I got a song this morning to sing that reminds us that God is always with us. And there's some motions that go along with it, too. Big kids, if you want to stand up, too, we can all do this together. <laughs> we love songs with motions, right? And it goes like this. When the storm rolls, storm rolls, storm rolls all along. Hey! You can do that? Storm rolls, storm rolls, storm rolls all along. Hey! And it goes, I am weak. What do you think? How might we do motions for weak? You got flabby arms, right? I am weak. But who is strong? Jesus is strong. So he is strong. And by his strength, so like if you imagine pulling a rope, by his strength we move along. That's how the, sto that's how the song goes. Think you can do that with me? Here we go, everyone. And the storm rolls, storm rolls, storm rolls all along. Hey, storm rolls, storm rolls, storm rolls all along. Hey, I am weak, he is strong. By his strength we move along. Storm rolls, storm rolls, storm rolls all along. Hey! All right. Thank you, everyone. You can be seated. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's a great song. Just a reminder that God's strength, that God is with us all the time. Jesus is with us, and he is always there to help us. So let's pray. Uh, if you will, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, and thank you for loving us, for being with us when we are afraid, when we doubt, when we are worried. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming on up today. And let's stand. I, have you, I should just have you stand the whole time because we're going to stand now for the reading of the Holy Gospel. We as Lutherans, we know that up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> Ooh. 
The Holy Gospel is written in the 24th chapter of St. Luke, beginning at the 36th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. As they, as they were talking about these things, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. And sometimes we need to hear those words and be reminded of that. But they were startled and they were frightened and they thought they saw a spirit. And, they said, and he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your hearts? See my hands, my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy, they were marveling. And he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, and everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Please be seated. Sort of hard to believe, this last week I uh, celebrated, I don't know if celebrate's the right word, but recognized that it's been two months that I was installed on February 11th, 
as pastor here at Emmanuel. In some ways, it seems like it was just yesterday. And in other ways, it seems like it was, it was years ago. There's a lot that I, I love being here about. They, they mentioned I, I love being in Florida. That's great. Uh, I, I used to, t- this weekend's the Masters, uh, the golf tournament, Augusta, Georgia. And you know, never, having never lived in a, a warm climate in the South, I, I'd, I'd look at, I'd watch the Masters and see all the, the, the green there and the flowers. And I just look longingly at that uh, golf tournament and think, wow, when is spring ever going to get here? <laughs> but now we've got like eternal summer here, don't we? There's certainly challenges, though, along the way. Uh, I, I have to say that, you know, there were plans and, and there are, were intentions. But how's the saying go? The best laid plans, the, the best of intentions. That things don't always go the way that you think that you want them to go. And, and you know, it, it felt like coming during the beginning of the season of, of Lent, I was installed. I'm preaching the next day, Transfiguration Sunday. And then uh, first Wednesday is, is Ash Wednesday. And we were off and, and running and bouncing from one thing to the, the next thing. And, and then uh, we had... Bonnie, our, our principal, was out with a health condition. We had Marsha was out with a health condition. Uh, we had Stephanie, our school board chair. She had a procedure. And uh, we had Kathy, our, our organist. Uh, so uh, thank you, Arlene, for playing today. But uh, Kathy's still recovering from uh, falling and breaking her hip on Good Friday. So it was like, it was like one thing after, after another. Uh, what, is, uh, what is more? Uh, we... Ha- Got some uh, disappointing news earlier this week. Uh, you might have saw in the bulletin that we have a call meeting for our principal on April 22nd. And the reason for that is Nancy Jankowski, who we had called as principal, she informed us that she was returning the call, that she's declining the call, and that she will not be coming to Emmanuel as principal. So again, that can be something that is disheartening, uh, something that is discouraging. Uh, then I had my Jeep breakdown. <laughs> Literally, I, I, was, I was driving on the highway. I was going over 75 on uh, Causeway Boulevard, and my Jeep died. Uh, I coasted down the hill. I prayed that the light stayed green, and thank God it did. I got through the light with no power to my Jeep, and it was able to turn and coast it into the racetrack uh, gas station, and then from there was able to get it towed. And it was under warranty, so it was a good thing. I got it, I got it repaired for a relatively uh, low cost. Uh, what else could happen, right? This, uh, th- then we get, I get a call from Christine on Wednesday that her son was in the hospital. So he's, uh, he lives in Milwaukee, and so we bought a plane ticket. That day I drove her to the airport that afternoon, got her on a flight, and she was able to get to Chicago, flew into Chicago, and was able to be with her son. Needless to say, it's like, wow, I'm just trying to catch my breath and try to keep up with all of these things that uh, are going on. And as I said, it, it's very easy to become, become discouraged. Because you ask the question, it's like, can't anything be easy? And, and you wonder, like, well, all this stuff keeps on happening. And you wonder, well, what is, what is next? What else could possibly go wrong? I think of the disciples now. We read the reading here in the Gospel of Luke where they are gathered together. And that first Easter, you know, we come and gather on Easter Sunday and we sing, Jesus Christ is risen today, hallelujah. And we, we, we sing, we, we shout out, he is risen, he is risen indeed, hallelujah. We have smiles on our face. We put on our Sunday best, you know, dre- best dresses. And uh, it, is, it is a day of celebration. It is a day of joy. But for those, those disciples, if you read the scriptures... 
that was not part of the vocabulary for the day. What we hear is they were afraid. They don't know what's happening. They don't know what is going on. They had given up three years of their lives to follow Jesus. They anticipated that he would be the king of Israel, that he would overthrow the Romans, and that they would share in in the glory. But things didn't go as planned. Jesus was crucified upon the cross. And all the things that they seemingly had put their, pinned their hopes and their, their, their dreams, it just did not go. It just did not go as planned. Can you relate? Have you ever felt discouraged? Ever feel like giving up? Feel like, well, what else? what else could possibly happen? What could go wrong? I was, uh, heard a message earlier this week, and I kind of want to share. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to look to a different reading from one of our appointed readings. And it is 2 Corinthians 4. I heard this reading, and it gave me some encouragement. It says, we have this treasure. It's the hope of the resurrection. It is the joy of Jesus. It is the fruit of the Spirit. It says, we have this treasure in jars of clay. What's the jars of clay? I remember the, the old band back in, I think it was the 90s, this Christian band called Jars of Clay. And the jars of clay it refers to these bodies in which we live. The thing is about jars of, of clay is that they are, are fragile and that, that they break. Just like our bodies are fragile, our, our bodies break. I, I shared, I was preaching on this, uh, this text one other time, and I didn't have time to, to do this, this this time around, but I, I got a, a, a clay jar, and I put a cross inside that clay jar, and then I took a towel and threw it on the ground and smashed that jar. The jar was broken. It was just in pieces. Sometimes that's the way it feels in life, that our, our life is just a bunch of broken pieces laying on the ground. But in the midst of the brokenness, what lay there? It was the cross of Jesus Christ. It is the hope. It is the hope that we have. So we have this treasure in jars of clay to show the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. It says we are afflicted in every way. And seemingly, sometimes it seems more than every way. But not crushed. Perplexed. Why is all this stuff happening? But not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the, bo- in the body the death of Jesus. You think about your baptism. In baptism, there's the imagery in Romans where it talks about how we are buried with Christ, that we associate with him in his death. But it also says here that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. So not only do we associate with his death, but because we associate with him in his death and because he is risen, that we also associate with him and join with him in the resurrection so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. You know, the world, the world does not have the hope that we have. The world lives in anxiety and worry. And yes, we are given to anxiety. We are given to worry because we are human. But we have the Spirit of God that lives in us. And we can be a non-anxious presence for a world that desperately needs peace. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring with us 
bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase in thanksgiving to the glory of God. So, in conclusion, what Paul says here, we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. I want to leave you with a couple things to take away from these words. To not lose heart, to not be discouraged. We learn very early on as Christians. If you grew up in Sunday school, you, you sang the song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. You know on an intellectual level, we don't stop saying it, that Jesus loves us. But we don't always feel it, do we? On those days where you are discouraged, you become disconnected from the knowledge that God loves you, you don't necessarily feel it. But that's where Jesus comes in. He invites us to come to this table. Do this often in remembrance of me. What did Jesus do when the disciples were afraid there? He appears among them. It says they are frightened. And he says, touch, touch the nail marks. See that it is me. And in the same way, Jesus comes to us today. And he says, when you doubt, when you don't have that feeling of love in your heart, Receive my body and my blood. Touch, taste, and see. Another thing, never fake it. Be authentic. Be real. The thing is, we come to church sometimes and we put on a face. I'm okay. You're okay. How you doing today? Oh, good. But that's not good. Because we all have hurt. We all have pain. One of the things here, I, 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 was, I, was, I was a little bit reluctant with sharing with you, saying that, well, I, I was a bit discouraged because we want to put on that face. And I'm okay, you're okay, but, but really that is not okay. We need to be, as a church, we need to be real with each other because God gave us each other for this journey called life, to support each other, to encourage each other. Uh, Richard and Judy Steinbrook, they came in earlier this week and they prayed with me in my office. And it was just such an encouragement to have someone actually pray with me. And the only opportunity, the only reason that they came in and prayed was because I was real. I was authentic. And I shared with them that I was discouraged. We need to share with each other. And we also need to recognize that there is hurt in each other. I had a good friend of mine, he once said, treat every person as if they're hurting inside because they are. As much as we may try to deny it, we all have a hurt. We all have a pain somewhere, some way. And a lot of times we don't, we don't deal with it. We just let it fester inside. But God's word says, expose the darkness to the light. Third thing, remember it's not about you. That's a countercultural message. Because you watch... TV and you see the advertisements, the commercials there, and what do they say? It's all about you. But God's word says, no, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's all about Jesus. And on either end, when we make it about us, we can become discouraged when bad things happen. When we make it all about us and good things happen, we become, we become prideful and glory in ourselves rather than glory in Jesus. And the thing is, is that God cares more about the way that you do things than the things that you actually do. Are you doing it with the right motivation? Are you doing it with the right heart? You can be doing all the right things for all of the wrong reasons. It was the church in Ephesus in the book of Revelation. Jesus speaks to them, and they, they, were, they were a model church. They were, again, doing all of the right things, but he says to them, you've forsaken your first love. Maybe 
you found yourself doing that in, in your marriage, where you're going through the motions. You're doing the, the right things, but your heart's not in it. We do that in church. We do all of the right things to serve God, but so often we're not doing it out of love. We're doing it out of obligation. We're doing it out of duty. Sometimes we even do it out of spite. Another thing, take time for renewal. Paul says here in 2 Corinthians, we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Pastor Miguel, you're going on vacation this week, right? And we want to pray for Pastor Miguel as he goes on vacation. It's been a long time since Pastor Miguel has gone on a vacation. We're, we're happy. We're excited for them. Going, they're going to Spain. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a great thing that we work from our rest. And we rest from our work. God did not create. He, he, we're called human what? Beings. Not human doings. And so rest is an important thing. It's also important that we take time in prayer and devotion with God to hear from Him each and every day to allow His Word to speak into our lives and to encourage us. How are you being renewed? How are you being refreshed today? The last thing I'll leave you with this. Repentance is change of heart change of mind. It literally means change and go a different, a different direction. Jesus' first words as he began his ministry was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, repentance is about changing the way that we're thinking rather than thinking the way that we think to start seeing and thinking in the way that God thinks. To see our circumstances, to see our life, not from a worldly perspective, but to see it from God's perspective, to see it from an eternal perspective. He says here, in verse 17, for this light momentary affliction, the things that we're going through, it can seem long. and call it long suffering, right? But whatever it is that we face today, it says, this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory that is beyond all comparison. As bad as it may seem today, it is only going to be that much more great an eternal glory with God. And that is what we're living for. Not just then, but we're living in that truth, in that power here today. So keep when, it, when the bad things happen in life, see it from God's perspective and look at it from an eternal perspective where the things that are seen as transient but the things that are unseen are eternal. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your grace. Uh, there are many times, Lord, where we become weighed down, we're fearful, we're worried. Uh, Lord, we wonder what's going to happen next. Uh, in those moments of discouragement, Lord, just to help us in our unbelief. Help us, Lord, to live repentant, to change our thinking, to change uh, the way that we see things, to see it not from our perspective, Lord, but to see it from yours. Uh, as we go out uh, today from this place, we pray, Lord, just that uh, you would equip us, uh, encourage us by your Holy Spirit to be that non-anxious uh, presence in a world that is uh, filled, Lord, with strife, that we would be that we would carry with us the peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue our worship now as we bring our tithes and our offerings before the Lord.
Let us stand now as we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Uh, we certainly want to <clears throat> lift up in our prayers here this morning. As I said, we pray for Pastor Miguel and Catherine as they uh, travel on vacation and all others who, who are traveling. Uh, we also want to pray healing for Harold Blanton, uh, who is the father of Colleen Webb, who suffered a stroke uh, earlier this week. Uh, we also continue to pray for Stephanie Wynn as uh, she continues to heal from uh, her procedure. Uh, we want to lift up Kathy uh, as uh, she pr continues to heal from her broken hip. Let us pray for the whole people of God and Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, in your presence we find fullness of joy, and by your right hand, Jesus Christ, you win and deliver peace forever. In the midst of this world's sins and sorrows, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name among us and all nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Assure those who live alone, too, that they are your children, upheld by your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders. We pray, Lord, for our president, for our governor, for our congressmen, for judges, for all others, Lord, who serve as leaders in this country. Preserve order and decency in this fallen world by their hands and restrain the sins and deception of the lawless that we may practice righteousness while awaiting the eternal peace promised in Christ's wombs alone. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, you have compassion on all those who are afflicted. We pray, Lord, that you would have mercy upon uh, Harold, and for uh, uh, Catherine and uh, Kathy and, uh, Lord, for Stephanie as well. For those, Lord, in need of healing and de deliverance, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by your son's crucifixion, all sins have been blotted out. Send us now the blessed refreshment of his bodily presence in the sacrament of the altar and make us fit partakers in repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who's taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying...
our Lord Jesus Christ. It was on the night in which he was betrayed that he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after the supper, our Lord took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, drink, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, also with you. and let us greet one another with God's peace.
Receive now the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. Amen. One of the things when we face discouragement, we turn to music. Uh, I don't really know too many people who don't like music. And it's important that what we listen to and what we sing points us to God's love and points us to God's faithfulness. That's one of the reasons that we come to worship. There's things that we have that repeat in our mind. What is the story that you are telling yourself? Are you telling yourself your story or are you telling yourself God's story? And uh, the song here that we're closing with today, it reminds us that uh, God is always faithful. He's always good to us. So please join in. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. Now, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You had led me through fire in the darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father, known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running out It's running after me Your goodness is running out It's running after me My life laid down I surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running out, it's running after me. Your goodness is running out, it's running after me. Your goodness is running out, it's running after me. My life laid down, I surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Uh, just a couple quick reminders before we go today. Uh, the principal call meeting is April 22nd. It is one week from tomorrow. 
Uh, also, we have the ministry fair outside. A number of different uh, groups that we have that serve here at Emmanuel have a, a table set up. And I want to encourage you, if uh, you are not serving in some way, some capacity here uh, at Emmanuel, you know, it's everyone serve one. We all have gifts. We all have talents. We all have abilities. We all have a way to help make a difference through the ministry of this church. So I uh, just encourage you to check out the different tables uh, to maybe discover a way that uh, you can serve the Lord here at Emmanuel. As a reminder of the reason why we exist as a church, let us speak our vision statement together. Through word and sacrament ministry, we share the love, joy, and peace of Jesus Christ among ourselves and with those around us. Our service has ended. The service now begins. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.